all of the processing done in the previous video was on the average image. But of course, we need to identify the cell bodies in each individual video frame. And the way that we are going to do that is by using the average data as a mask and then apply that mask to each video frame. Okay, so that means that we need to isolate the cell bodies from this binarized image. Now, it's clear from this image that not all of these white pixels correspond to cell bodies. Some of these are look like neuropil that are, you know, kind of far away and we want to exclude them. Some of these are also artifacts. These two in particular are uh, almost certainly artifacts related to a blood vessel. I'll talk more about this in a later video. And here you also see this cluster in the threshold map that's really, really long. This is not coming from one really, really fat neuron. This is actually an artifact from the flyback of the mirror as it's going through the scan path. Okay, so what we want to do is identify a threshold, uh, two thresholds that will remove really, really small clusters and really, really large clusters. And that's going to leave us with this image. Now, on the one hand, it's obvious that this is better than this. But on the other hand, it's also obvious that this is not a perfect solution. We've lost some neurons here in the middle because you know multiple cell bodies were overlapping in the image, so the clusters ended up being larger than our threshold that we set to get rid of this one. And it looks like we still have some non-cell body clusters that survived our threshold, including these two, which, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, these are, these are related to uh, blood vessels. Now, as I mentioned in the first video of this module, there are more advanced and state-of-the-art techniques to isolate uh, neuron cell bodies in calcium imaging data, but our naive image processing-based approach actually does a pretty good job, and of course, it's also a good introduction to image processing in MATLAB, and we are going to continue along those lines. So now is your moment to pause the video and work through the partially completed MATLAB code. And when you're ready, come back to the video and you can watch me walk through my solution. Okay, so let me close these figures. We don't need these anymore. So we are going to get the cluster information. So information about all the clusters in the thresholded map using the MATLAB function bwconcomp. So let's see what this results, this variable that I call islands. So this gives us back a structure that tells us about the, well, the image size, and it tells us that there are 417 objects or clusters. These are contiguous clusters in the thresholded image. And here we have pixel IDX list. Actually, now I do want to show that thresholded image again. So let's say image SC thresh IMG, and I'll set the color map to be grayscale. Okay, so looking at this image, we can see that there are 400, well, we can't really see this, we're not gonna count this, but there are 417 clusters in this image here. And that is what MATLAB has identified and isolated for us using this function, bwconcomp. So what is contained in this field pixel IDX list? Well, let's have a look at this. So islands dot pixel IDX list. So this is a cell array. And you can see that every element in the cell is a list of numbers. And these numbers correspond to the linear matrix coordinates where each cluster is found. So this one, this is just a, here you see the number. This is a cluster of exactly one pixel. This too is a cluster of exactly one pixel. So this is that matrix location 97,000. So we'd have to, you know, go down all the columns until we get to the 97,000th element and you know, I have no idea where that is. It's somewhere close to the end. So maybe it's, you know, maybe it's this pixel here, or maybe it's this pixel. You can see this is just a single pixel that is a cluster. Here's another cluster with two pixels. Here's a cluster with 28 pixels and 57 contiguous pixels. So touching neighboring pixels. And what we want to do now is create a new variable cell sizes that tells us about the size of each cluster, which corresponds to the number of numbers in each of these elements in this cell array. So we want a result that's gonna say eight, this is two, this is 57, and so on. 
So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We could write out a for loop. We could loop over all of the elements in pixel IDX list and count the number of numbers in each cell. But I'm going to do that in a more compact manner using this function cell fun. So this will apply a function to a cell array. And the function that we want to apply is length. So we are going to apply the length function to islands.pixelidx list. Okay, so now this variable tells us the number of elements, so the number of pixels inside each cluster. Okay, and now we want to find all of the uh, clusters that are too small and too large for us to consider to be cell bodies. So after some exploration and experimentation, I came up with these two values, 15 and 100. So we say any clusters that, are that have fewer than 15 contiguous elements and also, yeah, or any uh, clusters that have more than 100 elements, those are going to have a value of true in this vector, cells to cut. So this vector, cells to cut, this is a Boolean vector. So it's logical values, it's false and true. And basically it's true everywhere where either this condition or this condition is met. And then what I'm going to do is remove all of these identified clusters from pixel IDX list. So I'm going to say cells to cut equals empty, which means they will be removed from this pixel IDX list cell array. Now you can already see, and you've also seen in other modules in this course, that data processing and data analysis often entails a lot of parameters and a lot of parameter selection. So if you like, after the video, you can go back and change some of these parameters to see how that will affect the resulting uh, image, the resulting thresholded map. So you could say, you know, we will keep any clusters up to nine, or maybe you want to make this bigger, say 25 and so on. These are analysis parameters that you can explore. Another thing I want to mention is that I decided to set up this code so that I identify the cells that I want to remove, that I want to get rid of. You could have turned this around. You could have, you know, had this be something like cells to keep equals cell sizes. And then to keep the same uh, parameters, this would be greater than 14. Or, you know, then this would be cell sizes less than 101. And then this line of code would also look different because we would be picking the cells to retain in the data instead of the cells to remove. I just want to mention that because a lot of these details of setting up and writing out code is uh, there's some personal preference that's involved here. Okay, anyway, so let me dump out the original structure island. So we see there's 417 objects and a 417 cell array. And now after I run this line of code, we can see that the pixel IDX list now has only 79 elements in the cell array. So we've removed around 360 elements, or I guess uh, 340 elements from this thresholded image. So in fact, the majority of, of identified clusters we have removed from this threshold. Okay, but you can also see that there's now some inconsistency. This variable is internally, the information in this structure is internally inconsistent. We have 417 objects, but in fact, we only have 79 objects. So I'm going to update this field num objects. So I will write islands.numobjects equals num l for number of elements islands.pixelidx list. Okay, and then we can run this again. And now we have nice internal consistency here. Okay, so now what we've done is identify the uh, the islands, so the contiguous clusters in this image, we have removed the ones so we filtered out the clusters that are very small or very large. Now what we want to do is recreate an image that looks something like this, except that all of these cells that we have filtered out are actually now physically removed. So I'm going to do this here with this bit of code. Notice that I am creating a new variable. So you see sometimes I overwrite existing variables and sometimes I create new variables so that I still have access to the original variable, thresh image. Now there's not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily always correct or incorrect to overwrite versus create new copies of variables. But in this particular case, we want to compare 
the thresholded image before versus after. So we definitely do not want to overwrite the previous variable. Okay, so I'm initializing this new matrix threshold uh, image filt to be false. So this means it's going to be Boolean. I initialize it to be all falses. Okay, and then we loop through all of the islands. And uh, what do we want to set the value of this image at these pixels to? Well, you know, this is a Boolean vector. So we just want to be concerned with zeros and ones or trues and falses. So I'm going to write true here. So now we are creating this new image where um, all the pixels are initialized to, to false. And wherever we have a cluster that survived our thresholding here, that val the value at those, those pixels is set to true. Okay, so now we can visualize. So I believe that all of this code is already ready, and I don't think we need to do anything. Yeah, okay, very nice. So now we see our two images. This was before we applied our thresholding. This is after we applied our thresholding. Now we have our cleaned mask. And what we need to do next is apply this mask to all of the original data, so the three-dimensional camera data, to each time frame in order to isolate the cell time series from each individual cell body. And that is what we are going to do in the next video.